Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you. And uh, pleased to have in the studio with us Sheriff Richard Mack, the founder of the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association. He's on the board of directors of Oath Keepers. Not anymore. Not anymore? Okay. All right. And uh, former Arizona sheriff from Graham County. Absolutely. Thank you. Are, you. you are the archetypal Arizona sheriff. I mean, it's just, uh, and and CSPOA.org is the website. And uh, SheriffMack.com, M-A-C-K.com, is, uh, is your website. And it's been a while since we've talked on the air. It's great to have you back with us. It has. I was uh, thumbing through uh, the uh, TV the other day and showed my wife. I said, hey, there's Tom Hartman. You know? <laughs> I know so that that's guy. the first time my wife ever met you was uh -huh. vicariously well, through your, tell her I said your speech hi. program. Tell her I said hi. So you're, you're out there talking about there's no liberty with innocence in prison, innocent people in prison. I, you know, I've been going off on this kind of thing. And, and, and I mean, you and I come at these things from, from a very different point of view. You're, you're coming out of more of what would be considered, I think, generally a conservative or right-wing perspective, and I'm more of a liberal and left-wing perspective, but I think both of us are concerned about the abuse of power by the federal government. Absolutely. And, and, and you know, whether whether it's putting uh, Don Siegelman in prison or whether it's putting, you know, Ken Wright or Sam Girard in prison. And, and well, so... Well, Ken Wright didn't go to prison, but he got... His home was raided by a Department of Education SWAT team. Department of Education has a SWAT team? Right, so... And, Seriously, and all of that. Betsy DeVos just got a SWAT team. Well, sorry, it uh, it was Obama. Uh, yeah, sorry, okay, you can't so, blame her for that one. Well, yeah, but uh, that's that's pretty remarkable. But but is, yeah, isn't that astonishing? Yeah. And stock it happened in Stockton, California, and the the, the Stockton, California police to go. Well, it was the federal government. We couldn't do anything about it. And you already know how I feel about that. The local police and the local sheriff should stop that kind of abuse when it comes into its jurisdiction from the federal government. That's ridiculous. And this man is has his home ransacked. They did a no-knock warrant on his home, kicked in his door. And you know what the charge was? Yep. His estranged wife, who didn't even live there anymore, had not paid on her student loan. That was the crime. Wait a minute, a SWAT team for a student A SWAT loan? team for a student loan. Now, you can watch it. Okay. You, I see some it's people are gonna blame me. on YouTube. Look at it on YouTube. Just look yeah. up a uh, SWAT team raid by... Uh, Department of Education, you can add in Ken Wright's name if you want. I've never met Ken Wright, never talked to him. But I saw his video, and I said, now that video is part of my training in training sheriffs and, and peace officers across the country. That's that's remarkable. Um, one of the conversations that you and I had some time back, uh, you were suggesting that your read of the Constitution and of federal law puts, if you were still the sheriff of Graham County, mm -hmm. puts you above basically the federal government in terms of, of, of local authority. Of course. What's, where, where are you deriving that Well, from? first of all, I would say, where do you derive that the federal government has ultimate authority? Because the states formed the federal government, and they sure didn't form them in hopes of being controlled by them. Well, and the, in, and the in Tenth fact, Amendment says pretty explicitly that any powers, correct. you know, not, not uh, given to the, uh, you know, are reserved to the states and the people. Right. So, so it is it is a check and balance on federal authority that they can't become a power unto themselves. And if they want to be creative in giving themselves authority and power that they do not have constitutionally, they must refer to the Tenth Amendment. Right. But where do the where do the sheriffs come in? I've, I've, well, the there's sheriff no reference is the ultimate, to sheriffs in the Constitution. No, you won't knowledge. see it because, first of all, it's not a federal position of any. You don't see governors or dog catchers mentioned in the Constitution either, do you? Oh, do you no. think the dog catchers have more power than a federal authority? No, they might. May, well, uh, as far as trusting, I mean, they're part of I local trust, law enforcement, aren't but they? But there's one I trust the most. Well, he works. The most dog catchers work for the sheriff or for the chief of police, right. and they both do. the The federal government has stolen all of that authority, and that's why sheriffs think that when the Department of Education has their own SWAT team, that there's nothing they can do about it. That's an absolute lie. They should be a check and balance on federal uh, so when intervention. So when have sheriffs stood up to the federal government successfully? You have. Remember Sheriff Mack? Yeah. From Graham County, Arizona? Yeah. So <laughs> I did on several issues, but not just on the one I sued them over. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'm the only sheriff in American history to sue the federal government and win a case at the U.S. Supreme Court. Right. I know you already know that. Yes. You've read the but, case. But a lot of our viewers and listeners don't, no, so you yeah, might well, want to Google just Sheriff Mack, uh, Mack versus U.S., You'll see that two sheriffs, Prince and I, uh, were consolidated and went to the Supreme Court, and we won. And it was all on this, really, who's in charge. First of all, the Brady Bill is what we sued over. Uh, the decision of the Supreme Court called us the CLEOs, Chief Law Enforcement Officers. So if you want to see it in writing anywhere, 
look at the uh, Supreme Court decision of ours. I see. However, it's just a historical fact. The sheriff has always been the, the number one law enforcement officer in the county and in this country. The office of sheriff precedes our Constitution and the formation of our country. There were sheriffs back as far as 1650. They were already there uh, doing their jobs. Uh, founding father Oliver Walcott was a sheriff uh, to begin with. Uh, and it just stands to reason that uh, we the people are the ones who elect the sheriff. The sheriff is the only one that d answers directly to the people. He's not a bureaucrat. He's not appointed by some other body. He answers directly to the people. He's appointed by the people, and he is there to serve the people and protect them from all enemies, both foreign and domestic. So, of course, the sheriff should be stopping all these abuses. Uh, the one with Sam, Ger Sam Gerard that I have on my list there. Yeah. Uh, Sam Gerard, an Amish farmer, languishes in prison r right now while you and I speak, and we see all these politicians, ridiculous politicians, Democrats and Republicans alike, arguing about uh, cabinet nominees and arguing about who's nicest and who isn't or what the president can do and what they can't do. And we have Americans going to prison for life because he made a salve, a Vaseline-type salve, out of chickweed. And he's seriously, you can look it up on the on the Internet. He's facing 48 years in prison because nobody checks the federal government or their authority. And I'm telling you, yes, the sheriff should. It's his duty. It's his job. And we're going to stop crime by doing that. It, we had a big problem in this country in the late 19th century, early 20th century of people selling things and making medicinal claims for them. Uh, so? you know, and, and that were killing people. I mean, you know, well, Lydia, doctors kill people all the time, Tom. Not, well, let me, hundreds. Hear me out on this. Okay. Hear me out on this. Lydia Pinkham's tonic, which was used by women all across the United States, was cocaine and, and opium. Uh, Coca-Cola Coca -Cola had Coca was cocaine, okay. right? These were sold. These were sold as over-the-counter remedies originally. Yeah. Uh, Coca-Cola replaced the cocaine with caffeine in what 1920, 20, in the, in yeah. the 20s, somewhere in there. But um, people were dying because because of these patent medicines, right. because of these phony medicines, and so. Shouldn't we? Ha I, I don't disagree with you. The 48 years for almost anything short of murder is outrageous. Well, okay? the average sentence for murder is 11 years. Yeah. So, so I'm not disagreeing with you on that. But that said, I do want to know that if somebody's making a claim, if somebody's saying this chickweed salve is going to cure your psoriasis or cure your cancer, mm -hmm. that there's actually something behind that. Yeah, but Tom, that's the thing. The FDA approves drugs that kill people all the time ones that they supposedly checked out. And why would you trust the FDA? Oh, it's FDA approved, so I can take well, it. Well, part of the problem is why? the FDA doesn't actually check them out. They allow they you know, they allow the pharmaceuticals to do anything they want as long as the money's coming in. In large part because over the last 30 years, the budget of the FDA has been just dramatically slashed by yeah, conservatives and Republicans. Yeah, but but who then who protects us from from you do from hustlers? take your own responsibility for your life and your health. If, if, you trust the Mac, FDA? I do not have How I do not have the ability to say, okay, this this chickweed salve that you're handing to me, I'm going to go look in a microscope. I'm going to run a double blind study. No, but I'm you could certainly out. you Google anything you have. This, what what does the FDA but, but, approve? But just no, 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 wait on the internet doesn't mean it's real. Well, or okay, true. but the same thing with the FDA. You trust them? I trust the internet. I trust anybody more than the FDA. They are a political body. They don't answer to anybody. First of all, they let cigarette sm cigarettes be consumed all across the country because, oh, well, if you put a little warning on the package, well, put a warning on the chickweed salve. It's, not, it's never hurt anybody. But people die every year from cigarettes. A half a million in the United States. I, and I agree. now add alcohol. The same thing with 50, alcohol. 50,000 people a year die from alcohol. Okay, so now we're up really close to the millions. Now add the opioids that people get from doctors. Right. And doctors are some of the biggest drug dealers in our country. But the FDA approves everything they put out there, and people trust them because, oh, it's the FDA-approved medicines. Well, hang on just a second here. You, you, it, it sounds like you're saying two things that, that contradict. You're saying, on I'm the one hand, that you want uh, you know, but Sam Gerard to be able to market his chickweed salve, and you're saying, on the other hand, that you want to put the tobacco executives in jail. No, and, and, no, or, no, no. Or, I say or leave all of them, them alone. Selling it. Leave all of them alone. No, they. I don't want to stop them from selling it. I'm not going to so use you it. Think I do that, not smoke. So you think that if somebody sells a product, it, it, tobacco is a great example because, to the best of my knowledge, it is the only product sold in the United States that will kill you when used as directed. Correct. I mean, you know, cars will kill you, but when used as directed, they don't.
Correct. When you use tobacco as directed, it will kill you. It will kill you. And so shouldn't there be some mechanism for we the people yes. to say, we're not going to allow this. I mean, you know, particularly because of the kids. I mean, you've got a lot of, you know, 12, 14, 15. I started smoking when I was 13 years old. I, you know, I quit when I was 21, but it, and it was one of the hardest things I ever did in my life was quitting smoking. That stuff you. is damn addictive. It's five times more addictive than heroin. Shouldn't there be some kind of regulation on that? And shouldn't that regulation, you know, I'm going to regulate it, then get rid of it. And I'm not support. I do not support getting rid of them. I support an educated populace. I, I choose. I know. First of all, I know the apple cider vinegar is good for me. How do I know? Okay, I did the research on my own. Right, and you can take okay? it, and it makes leg cramps go away and, and all kinds of good it, stuff. It does and, all sorts of good yeah. things for you. Yeah, it's good but for your circulation. I know that opioids are bad for you. Yep. And I know that people get addicted to them, and I know people uh, overdose on them, and I know that doctors kill about 100,000 people a year on misprescriptions and misdiagnoses. So do you think that, so that, that you and FDA I... FDA does not do any good. You're not going to be safer because of but them. Hang on. What, what, it sounds like what you're suggesting is that you and I should be able to start marketing opioids. Um, no, what I what I suggest is that all of us should uh, take care of our own health and be in charge of that, and not have government take care of us. But if, especially when it's not working, yeah. But if and you, we pay billions to an FDA who are nothing but a bunch of crooks and go after Sam Gerard, an Amish farmer, no, who's I got, served by this. I got you know, I got it. I got it. They're crazy. Sam. But but how you know how do we deal with this if? In this, so in this you want to keep you want to keep you want to keep the Department of Education SWAT team. You want to keep the uh, BLM SWAT teams. You I want think all the, the regulations. Of education having a SWAT team is crazy. It is uh, number one, and, and that's and, why that's included. Yeah, I, you know, I get that, and and you know, people can. But people the FDA is not doing anything to save our so lives you get rid or to of the stop FDA, anything. And you know, you're concerned about uh, I forget the name of the company. I would rather have freedom Oxycontin. than FDA. So, but. But so you think that that OxyContin or heroin should be able to I should be able to buy it at the local CVS over the counter or, or, I wish or on the would, Internet? I, didn't, I wish we didn't have them at all, but I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to smoke. I'm not going to drink, which I don't. Right. OK, but, I'm going to keep but, using that. So I'm in charge of my health, not the federal government. OK, but what if you're 15 years old, not well informed? Well, I hope you will. You have some parents that are raising you properly. I'm, this uh, is a family you know, are, issue. Don't take a family issue. Who don't have functional don't, parents. Don't take a family issue and give it to the federal government to be in charge of. They'll screw it up worse than anybody will. So, so your solution is basically no government. Get government out of my. I, it's not totally libertarian. Because, because what happens when I you believe. take out the government? The people who step into that void are the billionaires and the big corporations. They already are. Well, I, I don't. Do we have out of control government as I, it is? I don't. We get know, both. I, I, okay, I, we I, have both. But, but I'm telling you, the small government sales pitch, is, you know, that the Koch brothers are out there selling is get government off our backs so we can dump more poison in the stream, so we can put more poison in the air. That's what it's all about. You know, they're, they're one of the largest polluters in the United States. The, the, the whole deregulate thing is like, we want more profit some, and we want to be able to kill people while we're doing it. Some of them and might I'm not be just selfish. talking about the Koch brothers. I mean, this yeah, is generally it's a speaking them, industry. But, but it, it's, it might be selfish sometimes. But uh, my only selfishness, selfishness with all of this is mm. to be free and left alone. Yeah. And now we have a Sam Gerard that's looking at life in prison. Yeah. And he, and he shouldn't be there. And that's my plea to everybody is let's get together. People like you and me, I, I can always deal with you yeah. because we're, we're, first of all, you're honest. I've said that on your program before. Yeah, I, I, I know you're we honest. Res we respect each other. Right? Okay. There's and I can deal with a liberal. Who's honest, okay? <laughs> and I can uh, deal with the conservatives. The ones that are honest. completely hypocrites, that's where I have a problem. But yeah. I know you're honest about this, and I want to work with the ACLU. I want to work with you, and I want to work with other, even the Southern Poverty Law Center, yeah. to protect people like this yeah. and to get people. I want him out of prison, and I want a presidential pardon. There you go. Free Sam Gerard. Okay, Sheriff Richard Mack, uh, sheriffmack.com, CSPOA. Uh, dot org is the and for this per per particular one it's uh the freedom coalition dot com thank you the this freedom coalition is the tom hartman Great. program sheriff sheriff mack with us thank you so much sheriff we'll be back with your calls on anything goes friday stick around